Hello, Apish people. Um, happy, I hope, you guys all had an amazing Thanksgiving and are ready to jump right back into tutoring, right back into American history. So, like I said before the holiday, um, we are a tad bit behind. So, um, we are going to do chapter, chapter 10, skip chapter 11, and do chapter 12. I think that's how I worked it out in my brain. So, um, chapter 10 is all about the age of Jackson. Oh, we are talking, we are going to be talking about the Jacksonian democracy and what happened during Andrew Jackson's time in the White House and as president. So we are going to first talk about Jacksonian democracy in this video. The Rise of Democratic Society Visitors to the United States in the 1830s, such as Alexis D. Tocqueville, a young French aristocrat, were amazed by the informal manners and democratic attitudes of Americans. In hotels under the American plan, men and women from all classes ate together at common tables. On stagecoaches, steamboats, and later in railroad cars, there were was also only one class for passengers, so that the rich and poor alike sat together in the same compartments. European visitors could not distinguish between classes in the United States. That's important. Men of all backgrounds wore simple dark trousers and jackets, while less well-to-do women emulated the fancy fill and confining styles illustrated in wide circulation women's magazines such as the Godey's Ladies Book. Equality was becoming the governing principle of American society. So, so, we, we, this age of democracy, um, really took shape in the form of all classes coming together and sharing the same ideology. Among the white majority in American society, people shared a belief in the principle of equality, more prestigious equality, of opportunity for white males. These beliefs ignored the opposition of enslaved African Americans and discrimination against free blacks. Equality of opportunity would at least in theory allow a young man of humble origins to rise as far as his natural talents and industry would take him. The hero of this age was the self-made man. So, so this relates to the American dream that we now think of. Um, the possibilities are endless in America. So, politics of the um, of the common man 
So how does this relate to our political landscape? There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight ideals that we are going to summarize and you are going to summarize on your assignment today. Um, there is universal adult suffrage, party nominating conventions, popular election of the president, two-party system, rise of third parties, more elected office, offices, popular campaigning, and the spoil system. So we are going to summarize those eight and you are going to summarize them in your own words for today's assignment. So universal male suffrage. Western states newly admitted to the Union, Indiana, Illinois, and Missouri adopted state constitutions that allowed all white males to vote and hold office. These newer constitutions omitted any religious or property qualifications for voting. Most eastern states soon followed suit eliminating such restrictions. As a result, throughout the country, all white males could vote regardless of their social class or religion. Voting for the president rose from 350,000 in 1824 to more than 2.4 million in 1840 a nearly sevenfold increase in just 16 years, mostly as a result of changes in voting laws. In addition, political officers, offices could be held by people in the lower and middle ranks of society. Party nominating conventions. In the past, candidates for office had commonly been nominated either by state legislatures or by King Caucus, a closed-door meeting of a political party's leaders in Congress. Common citizens had no opportunity to participate. In the 1830s, however, caucuses were replaced by nominating conventions. Party politicians and voters would gather in a large meeting hall to nominate the party's candidates. The Anti-Mosaic Party was the first to hold such a nominating convention. This method was more open to popular participation hence more democratic. So, um, you guys are familiar with how parties vote for their candidates in 2020, right? So, so this was actually the first occurrence of this to happen. In the presidential election in 18, of 1832, only South Carolina used the old system in which the state legislature chose the electors for president. All other states had adopted the more democratic method of allowing the voters to choose a state's slate of presidential electors. So, so this goes to the Electoral College. This is the basis of the Electoral College. So, yes, we, we do vote by popular vote, um, but not nationally. Um, we popular vote um, 
by the states and states determine the electoral and I'll attach a video about the electoral college um, in this folder if you want. So the rise of third parties. So lots of third parties got in the mix. While only the large national parties, the Democrats and the Whigs, could hope to win the presidency, other political parties also emerged. The Anti-Mosaic Party and the Working Men's Party, for example, reached out to groups of people who previously had shown little interest in politics. The anti-Masons attacked the secret society of Masons and accused them of belonging to a privileged anti-democratic elite. So, so we see this, this rise of political parties um, in, in the nation um, at this time. The anti-Mosaic Party, the Working Men's Party. Present day, we have the um, Libertarians Party, the Green Party, um, a bunch of others. Just search for third parties on Google, and there's a lot. During the Jacksonian era, a much larger number of state and local officials were elected to offices instead of being appointed, as in the past. This change gave the voters more voice in their government and also tended to increase their interest in participating in elections. So more elected elected officials versus nominated officials. Popular campaigning and then the spoiled system. Popular campaigning. Candidates for office directed their campaigns to the interest and prejudices of the common people. Politics also became a form of local entertainment. Campaigns of the 1830s and 1840s featured parades of floats and marching bands in large rallies in which voters were treated to free food and drink. The negative side to the new campaign techniques was that in appealing to the masses, candidates would often resort to personal attacks and ignore the issues. A politician, for example, might attack a, an opponent's aristocratic heirs and make him seem unfriendly to the common man. We see this a lot in... Um, in political parties nowadays. President, Senate, attack ads. We see attack ads um, a lot of the time. So this is popular campaigning appealing to the basis. And, and this is what, um, what Andrew Johnson Jackson was famous for the spoiled system and rotation of office holders. Winning government jobs became the lifeblood of party organizations. At the national level, President Jackson believed in appointing people to federal jobs as postmasters, for example, strictly according to whether they had actively campaigned for the Democratic Party. So being loyal to the party. Any previous holder of the office who was not a Democrat 
was fired and replaced with a loyal Democrat. This practice of dispensing government jobs in return for party loyalty was called the spoiled system because of a com comment that in a war, victors seize the spoils or wealth of the defeated. In addition, Jackson believed in a system of rotation in office. By limiting a person's person to one term in office, he could then appoint some other deserving Democrat in his place. Jackson defended the replacement and rotation of the office holders as a democratic reform. No man, he says, has any more intrinsic claim than to an office than the other. Both the spoiled system and the rotation of the office holders affirmed the democratic ideal that one man was as good as another and that ordinary American was capable of holding any government office. This belief also helped build a strong two-party system. I do realize that this whole video sounded uh, great, like Andrew J Jackson was a great president. And yet, um, politics and this expansion of d democracy really um, shadowed um, this time period. But in the next few videos, we are going to see, um, see the corrupt deeds that the spoiled system has, and we'll see the Indian Removal Act and some of these bad policies that Andrew Jackson did have as president. But until then, I will see you tomorrow.